Hey, this is Nick the Mining Book Guy. Today is Saturday, November 12th, uh, 2016 in the evening. And this is the second video in the Orca Gold series. Um, first thing, if you have not seen the first video, you need to see that before moving forward. Um, I have full disclosures in there and a ton of important information about what this series is all about. Please do click on the link that you see on the screen. If you don't see it, or um, an alternative is to just scroll down and click the link um, in the notes section. But uh, really uh, watch that first. And if you have watched that, now you can continue. So uh, Orca Gold is the main company we're discussing here. I uh, want to quickly just you know talk about in the last week, you can see this is a three month chart or so, and it just got crushed along with a lot of other gold stocks. But um, I, I started buying you know, back here in October at 36 cents all the way up to you know, uh, 51 cents right at the top. Bought a little more here and you know, I just couldn't resist. But I, of course, uh, like many others, I don't know where the price is going. So I bought some more shares at 44 cents and then I did buy some on Friday at 37 cents. I'm, I'm going to get back into that at the end of this video. But basically, um, I am down. Um, you know, I have real money here, a lot of money. I'm, I'm down, you know, 15 to 20%, literally thousands of dollars. I'm not proud of this, but I, I really want to be transparent here because I think this is a great example stock to share with you. I, I didn't add that in my original disclosures. Um, you know, this is, this is a stock that is relatively liquid, especially compared to other stocks I own. And, uh, so I don't think my buying or selling really affects it that much. Uh, but I really want to be clear you got to do your own due diligence, own research, whether it's this stocks or other stocks in the mining stock world. And at the same time, this is not just about, I actually really, I'm not trying to hard sell you at all on this. I think this is going to be a great stock, you know, for this whole cycle. And this is one of my top holdings, but you can get a ton out of this. Just, um, you know, uh, you know, l learning how to use CEO.ca, which uh, I'll, I'll go to right now. I, I'm, I'll talk about this in a second. But CEO.ca is what ties in making money in stocks and learning about stocks. And so, again, you don't need to, um, <laughs> to get involved at all, but I, but I just want to be extra clear there. And so what's cool here is I've got a great story for you know, this spontaneous second video. I didn't really know what I wanted it to be about, but now I know exactly, um, you know, based on the events of the last week. So this is an article page at CEO.ca by uh, Newton, Peter, Peter Bell, uh, who's at Newton. And this is, this is, I love sharing this one, how you can use CEO.ca. I highly recommend you read this. I have, I'll also have um, a link in my notes on, on this, but the most important thing I got up out of, of it is that you really want to tag everything tag every post you do you should tag and i i like tagging things and um newton, newton he's like the expert tagger at ceo.ca i actually tag even more often um because uh because of this re after reading this article there's nothing wrong with it it's one of the most powerful to tools at ceo.ca and um i'm i'm going to go through a very specific example related to orca gold uh and so uh you know talking about all this tagging I'm on the East Africa Metals page. So this is a company. See, see this little um, uh, dollar sign EAM. This is a company page. And I'm scrolling up here. So um, this was just kind of funny. New Newton's really good at live blogging as well. And he, he, he actually did this blog thing on um, the Precious Metal Summit in Zurich. But he wasn't even interested in East Africa Metals. Um, one of my other buddies, Vaughn, he just said, you know, Newton, try this out. Because Newton was asking for, for you, know, you know, possible companies. And then you just go start going crazy on you know November fourth, and and no no one else is really following East African metals, but what's cool is that it totally ties into Orca Gold. Again, we're gonna get into this in a sec, but uh, I wanted to go into ah there we go. Th this was this was one of the key posts. Seeing a lot of similarities with A A N. That's Aton Resources. I'll get into that as well, but. Um, Apparently, there are good reasons to be in a few countries around the Arabian Nubian Shield. Area plays, regional plays, shield plays. So this, this is a great post because he's he got two companies in here, and then he's got these other, um, you know, hashtag, which is just kind of a general tag at co.ca. And so you, there, um, what's neat is that people, you know, could pick up on this even if they're not in the East Africa Metals Room. And I'm going to go to another page now. So I'm I'm at MBG Trends. So this is my room that I've I've you know I created and I've talked about before. But uh, 
what's neat here, this was my original video, and I was just trying to get people, you know, you guys who are watching this, to post about it. And there were a few posts here, but this was, this was a key one. So I have no idea who D.W. Jones is, but he saw one of those tags, the, the East Africa medals tag, showed up in the Aton room, and then he tagged that and Orca here. And I love this, because I was already thinking this, and he wrote, yeah, isn't um, Orca Gold on the same trend as Aton Resources running down through Egypt? And so, like, I, I, I love seeing this at the time, and I was thinking about maybe responding, but then another buddy of mine, Mighting Catalyst, he, you know, great post. He posts this, um, you know, a picture of the Arabian Nubian Shield. I, I actually love this because I was thinking of this same image. This, this image is from the Aton Resources PowerPoint. I'm going to get back to that in a minute as well. Um, but, I, you know, I responded, and uh, basically, you know, being facetious a little bit, I was... I was already thinking about this video, so like this was this was great on its own. But then you know just to go even further, and this this is also really cool. Um, I am scrolling up here, so you can see that D W Jones, because he tagged Orca and Aton in the MBG MBG Trends room, it also shows up in the Aton Resources Company room. And then you get a totally different person responding, and this is Blaine Monahan. I hope I respond, um, you know, pronounce that right. But this is this is also cool because he's not just a speculator like most of us, or not most of us, but just like a lot of us. He is actually the investors relations at Aton Resources, and you know, provides you know a really you know clear professional response here. Uh, you know, talking about the Arabian Nubian Shield and how Orca Gold and Aton Resources probably can feed off of each other. At least that's my impression. And, you know, mentioning the Ross Beatty thing, which to me is was a really key reason to get an interest in Orca Gold. But what I'm showing you here is like, you can follow these neat conversations on CEO.ca. Like you really want to get used to going into all these different rooms. And like this, this was spontaneous. It's not like I thought this was going to happen, but I thought this was a really cool thing to focus on for a next point for Orca Gold. And, um, and, and, you know, another quick disclosure, I own a few shares in Aton Resources. I actually really do um, like it, but there's, there's some things I'm a little, um, you know, I just, it's just not at the same level f for me as Orca, but I'm going to, um, you know, take a closer look here at the Arabian Nubian Shield. Uh, we've got basically a whole bunch of deposits or, or um, you know, in a few mines that are, uh, going up and down the Nubian Shield, which is on the African side of this. And I'm not going to go through all of these, but you can see right up here, these two are part of Aton Resources, and this is Egypt. And then we go down in Orca. This is Sudan, and, and you know very close to the Egyptian border. And then you go a little further, and down here is uh, er Eritrea, and we've got Bisha, which is a you know really important uh, VMS mine, so we've, uh, gold, copper, zinc mine in, um, in Eritrea. And then, not, not shown here, but still, it's neat. You can see, uh, you know, the geology that goes all the way down into Ethiopia. And that's where we get to East Africa Metals, that, that uh, first company I mentioned. And that's the uh, Adaibo Harvest. Or, I might have pronounced that wrong. But basically, they've, got, they've also got, you know, a VMS deposit or a few deposits. And, and so, this is another reason, kind of general reason, that I like Orca so much. Is that you've got all this activity. Like, like I... I don't own any shares in East Africa Metals. I mean, I do own some shares in Aton, but even if I didn't own shares in either of them, I would, I'd be really excited about this because I love seeing activity, you know, new activity in these countries. Basically, all these countries are, you know, considered pretty risky, though somewhat surprisingly to me, I know a lot of Canadians and Americans are very open to investing in Nevsun when their, you know, their core asset is, is Bisha. I, I mean, it just goes to show that, you know, no matter how risky a country is, it's, you know, it's run by a dictator, but it's been, you know, quite stable over time. What, I'm, what we're hoping is that these three other countries can kind of follow suit to Eritrea and, you know, that they'll be stable enough and maybe improve their, their mining code and that we'll get more, um, you know, more mines. So Sukari is actually doing quite well in Egypt. But basically, this is, you know, more than just an emerging district. It's an emerging area play or regional play. And I'm not even talking about the Arabian Shield side, but that's also interesting. You know, it's, uh, you know, this is Sa mostly Saudi Arabia going a little into Yemen, but like, it's really cool to see this develop. And I've, I've seen the same thing in West Africa. In fact, I'll put up a link to my West Africa video, which, which was my main focus in Africa, but this is very quickly becoming, you know, my number two focus. So 
I don't really have hard numbers to provide you here. This is kind of one of those, I wouldn't say wishy-washy, but this is one of those things where it's like a big trend. And I love that Orca's right in the middle of it. And obviously following the interest from other people on CEO.ca, I think is just, is just really valuable for seeing what I consider to be positive momentum. And, and I am hoping that those other companies, you know, whether I own them or not, do well. I think this can be a win-win for everybody. And maybe not every country here is going to succeed, but hopefully, you know, hopefully Sudan does, but, but hopefully at least a few of them do. And I can at least, you know, pick up on, on that as, as time goes on. So we're, we're following both the geopolitics and the geology at the same time. So uh, let me see if I had a few more things. I, I, I wanted to go in a you know, slightly different direction. Uh, let's go to the next page. So this, you know, just as another CEO.ca example, this is the Ofrica panel. And so I happen to have created this. Actually, I'll, I'll show you. Like, this is not just mine. Like, there's um, Excelsior, awesome contributor. And, and Vaughn, he doesn't contribute much here. But, I mean, I, I really appreciate that he helped me start uh, start this. These These are members. So this is a public panel. And just, you know, to not go into too much detail, one reason I like panels so much is that not so much that they're just invite only. Like, I, I would really be happy to have anyone posting in here, but we keep the quality of posts high because you're, you, just, you can't join if you're anonymous. And, um, you know, there's, there's, it's a specific, you know, topical discussion. So this, this one is about Africa, a little more focused on, on gold. That's where the AU comes in. But I'm, you know having running this panel i'm open to basically anything related to africa i'm actually going to post a couple things right now just to show you how easy it is now if, if you want to skip ahead a few minutes this this might be a little clunky because i i didn't really plan this out uh too well but i'm, I'm going to show you just exactly how i post because i really want to encourage people not necessarily to post in this panel but just to show you how easy and how valuable it is to post on ceo.ca so these articles were actually found by um my buddy uh, Jay Fire, who who runs the FiFighter.com site, I'm sure I'll make a video on him in the future, and and some of you are, might be very familiar. But he he actually found some great Sudan posts. Actually, I'll, I'll post this one first. Uh, so what what I tend to do, I just you know copy and paste the title. I you know this is this is kind of like uh, become second nature after a while. But uh, I like sharing information on these things. Uh, you know, let's see. Oh yeah, so we got we got the title. We got the link, and I know some people post from um, some people post from their phones, but I I like to be on my laptop like I am right now. And this this was I thought this was a very good um, you know secondary information. So sometimes I add a little bit more information, and uh, you know what, I will scroll down slightly. So yeah, it's it's neat. This is a neat article because you can see that there's other activity in Sudan, even though there's no big commercial mine, there's other stuff going on. And so what I would want to do is I'll tag it with various things like Sudan. So like that's, that's the main focus. And I will tag gold as well. And here I will, you know, usually I would, I would do something a little further, but I'll, I'm just going to tag, um, you know what, I'll say relevant to org. And uh, oh, there you go. Hat tip at jfire you know none, none of this stuff is is completely necessary but uh you know the more tags the better like that, that's that's the that's the way i feel uh or at least i'm starting to feel more more in that nature especially because of that newton article so you know what i'm just going to post this oh uh that is boom good so this is this is out there so, so just to show you it's like in the orca room bam it's there and uh you know like let's see yeah, some, someone else is here. Just I like looking at that too. I mean, just to sh see who's online. Sometimes when you post stuff, like people just pop up out of nowhere. This is late night Saturday, so you're not really seeing that. But uh, you know, just an important point. I really like tagging um, country rooms, and you'll see like m this is pretty much just me. But like, even if you're not interested in Orca, you can see all the stuff on Sudan. So again, I I, I just can't encourage it high you know enough that. Uh, it's such a good idea to tag these things because you start to organize information and someone months or even years down the road is going to find this stuff. I'm going to tag this other one, and, and I actually wanted to point this out. This is not good news. Sudan, um, you know, sharp uh, pr price increases. This one was also found uh, by Jfire, which is 
which was great. I, I mean, I'm sure I would have come across this eventually because I'm kind of, you know, obsessed about Orca in Sudan, at least recently, but all the better that someone else found it. And, you know, that's the point, like CEO.ca is, is aggregating this information often before any other uh, sites. So, um, you know, I'll definitely give him a little more credit here. You know, hat tip at JFire. And we will also... And this one is, uh, you know what, I'll change that a little bit relevant to org. Um, uh, needs to, see, I'm not, I'm not very good at, uh, you know, walking and chewing, chewing gum at the same time. <laughs> uh, I think that's good enough. There you go. So, um. We'll uh, just post that. But like, there you go. Okay, so so this took a little longer than I expected, but I'm posting things like this all the time, and I, I encourage all of you to do this as well. It's 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 that simple. You just you just start to to get in the habit, and I'm I'm sure that one of you out there or a few of you out there will will find it valuable. You know, um, seeing seeing it as this information develops. So. The one other point I wanted to make was that even though this last one I posted is a negative, and I've seen, you know, there's been some negative developments in Ethiopia, and there's been some mixed developments in Egypt. Uh, you know, the IMF just uh, had to, to bail them out or at least do a partial bailout. I just want to, you know, point out something that's really important to me. Uh, you know, mining, and I think in particular gold mining, is the perfect type of business for the poorest countries in the world. And so... As long as the co country doesn't completely collapse or we don't get into like a Venezuela type situation, I don't consider, you know, these negative types of news to be necessarily all that bad. I mean, it's, it is bad, but like, I, I don't jump to conclusions too much. And, and, and I think that people sometimes tend to just have that immediate bias. So if, if they're already negative on it, they just get even more negative. So I just want to be clear about that. Like this hasn't, it's very possible some people saw this news and sold sold on it. I, I wouldn't necessarily expect that. But um, for me, this does not have any effect. Uh, I mean, I just bought shares. It hasn't had any effect on me buying or selling shares. But it might over time. So that, so, I, so it's just, uh, it's like all these pieces of information, they add up over time. And I may look, look back at this in a few months or six months or a year. And maybe it'll become more relevant there. So, so. Um, you know, for now, I'm still very positive on uh, Sudan and, you know, gold emerging as an important uh, part of their economy. Now, I'm going to shift gears one more time. And this is, I thought this, I think this was kind of cool what I was going to be looking into. So this, is, we're back in the MBG Trends room. What was I going to check out? I think I was going to Scroll up a little bit and look at a few. Yeah, that's right. So, so what's cool, I, I have to say I'm, I'm really excited that a few more people seem to have started posting at MBG Trends in, um, you know, since my Orca video and a few were, were before that. And, and I just love that. I love seeing new people on here. And this, this was a great post. And you can see there's a few thumbs up. One of those was from me. And um, Andrico, who just started posting, he wrote, I find that when I feel uneasy buying, which I do right now, is when I should buy and I am. This this is so simple, but it's a great insight. And you know, I I personally um, you know wonder if I should be feeling more uneasy. And I'm I'm gonna check um, another post. Actually, is it over? Yeah. So I so so uh, Nick, um, not not me, Nick, but uh, you know another Nick on here uh, who who I really respect. He just wrote, you know, gold dump makes me feel sick. I mean, this this was in the afternoon on Friday. I mean, we already saw an onslaught of, you know, d gold dumping um, throughout this week. And, you know, I, the point is not to be political, but, but really it is incredible that despite many people on CEO.ca predicting Trump was going to win, I can't think of a single person who thought gold was going to drop. And there's a lot of like newsletter writers or people out there who were so sure that if Trump won, gold was going to spike to fifty or hundred dollars. And I'm not, I'm not saying like you know putting these people down, but it just shows how difficult it is to predict things. But really, this this was a total shocker this week. I, it's it's I can't think of a single person out there who you know put those things together: Trump winning and gold getting crushed, let alone copper and you know base metals moving up. So that so this week was a total crazy week. 
And, um, you know, Alan had a response and then Nick had, uh, you know, wrote a little more. And, and, and I can really relate to this. I've been an aggressive briar for um, a few explorers this week into weakness, but then now thinking how much cheaper they should be going the next week. And, and uh, you know, just to be clear, I'm only picking out a few people's posts. I, I, there's, a, there's a whole bunch more I was reading this week. Um, so, I, I, I mean, this is just a shout out to a few people, but, you know, just to let you know, like, there, if I don't mention you, I di- there's a lot of other posts here that I really appreciated, but I did want to focus in on Goldfinger, who has got excellent technical analysis, at least from what I've seen, he's had some great predictions, and, you know, talking about what Andrico just said and what Nick just said, but then putting it in with, with someone who's, um, you know, a specialist in technical analysis, I started to feel a little uneasy when I was reading this. You know, I, I'm not that great at technical analysis, but, uh, you know... I have been thinking about $1,200 as kind of a magic number, but then thinking about if you can't, uh, or, or actually, is that what I was going to read? There was one point here. Um, well, basically, you can read this on your own, but what, and, and, and what's, by the way, I'm in the Goldfinger room, and this was in the at Nick room. That's another great way, you know, as long as someone has an at in front of their name, if you want to find their post quickly, you can go to their rooms or you can go to the at mining book guy room. So that's another powerful feature at um, CEO.ca. But, you know, what I gather from, Go- from what Goldfinger is saying and from what some other technical analysts are saying is, you know, if we, if we really broke through 1200, we might be really, really getting busted up. And, uh, you know, I... I, you know, on one level, I don't know where the bottom is, but I really feel where it's, you know, if it's not here, it's right around the corner. But man, if, if, if I was wrong, I, I, I do, I do start to feel sick if, if I start thinking that somehow gold could drop under a thousand. So, you know, again, I'm not an expert in this stuff, but I've got, you know, my own strong convictions. And so reading all of this by the end of Friday, um, just yesterday, I started feeling a little, little sick and maybe maybe I'm not feeling enough pain, and and that kind of gets into you know the whole idea of you know where is the bottom, you know like what's what's um what's going to happen. Well, I'm going to call it right here. This this is not like an official call or anything. I was an aggressive buyer last week. I can't think of a single person who actually tried to call the bottom, um you know on Friday last week or or early this next week. But you know what? I'm going to say like. It wouldn't surprise me if that happened because no one ever gets this exactly right. I'm just, I just always wonder, you know, why does it always t- seem to take a little longer than expected? I think a lot of people, and myself included, were thinking later in November or early December, and it seems like a lot of the technicals are pushing that way. But you know what? I'm, I, like, I feel that there is a decent chance we, we could be right at the bottom right now. Now, with that said, this is the most important point, and I really, if you're still listening to me, I think this is great, especially if you're a newbie type person, or, or if you're, you've been in this industry, but you're not feeling that confident. I very, very strongly feel, assuming, assuming that gold does not get totally whacked, which I don't expect it to go down below 1,000, like, whether you bought right now, or you bought a month or two from now, or you bought a few months later, like, it would not surprise me at all if you're going to be ecstatic a few years from now that you bought. And, and I'm specifically talking about gold because I don't feel as confident about others. But I'm talking about, you know, not kind of gold, but, all, but definitely the miners and, and not specific companies necessarily, but just, you know, a basket of companies, you know, GDX or GDXJ. And I'm personally trying to pick, you know, the best companies out of the lot. So, you know, Orca Gold, that's a very specific company with its own risks. But I'm just saying, you know, I've... I, I, and, and this is the truth, you know, going back a few years, I really felt that 2017 was going to be the time where, you know, where things shine. I, I thought it maybe was going to be a little earlier, but really I didn't necessarily think it was going to go mainstream yet. So I feel that so, anywhere between now and probably much of 2017, it's a true sweet spot for what we're doing. I mean, this in, in, in a way, it's kind of the second chance because, because it is true. For, for all these gold mining stocks, the best chance, uh, you know, your best opportunity was right at the beginning of 2016 and of 2015. But I really strongly feel this, this is your, your next best chance. So I'm not telling you to go out and buy, but I'm telling you, you need to take a deep look right now if you haven't. Like this, this, is, this could be considered a great gift and you're not gonna care if you bought right now, a few months from now or a few months later. Maybe I'll get into that in another video, but I am definitely telling you also, you know, like, if, if you come back to this video in 2018 or 2019 or 2020, 
that it's not the same thing. Like I, maybe, maybe a ton of people are going to find this video in a couple years and like, you might still be able to make money, but man, there might be a, a horde of people there and you'll, and it's, it's not going to be the same. We're going to be in bubble territory and, and maybe I'll already be selling. I, so again, I can't emphasize it enough just that you, you, if you're serious about this, the next few months might be critical. I mean, this last week, I was so honed in on all this stuff. I, I really like this. Th- th- I, there's a, there's a, there were a lot of weeks in the summer where this industry is just dead, and and it, and it is very cyclical. But I really feel strongly we're onto something. I respect a lot of these CEO.ca people who are making these types of posts, and, and you know sometimes um, I it, it is a little weird to, to I, I don't like seeing other people feeling the same way that I do. But I really feel we're on to something here about scratching, scratching the bottom, whether it's now or a few months from now. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll leave that part um, there. But I guess I, I did have just a couple quick things to end with. This, this video is probably going a little longer than I expected. But, you know, it's, I get to do what I want. I, I run this thing. It's not like I work for anybody else. But uh, here we go. We've got, um, oh, yeah, just, just going back to the index. So this is just really cool. So, uh, you know, Newton, Manolo, and where's the other guy? Oh, CGM. This is another such a powerful thing at CEO.ca. My favorite time is checking out the index, which is, which is the main room. And so a lot of people who come here, they only know the index. And sometimes the index gets really messy and you, you, it's just like chaos. But days like today are great. So this myth is, is um, uh, being tagged everywhere. That is the metals investors forum and so i've never i've never been to one of these conferences before and this is going on right now there you go saturday today and sunday tomorrow and even though i know that i'm missing out on things by not going to conferences it's so cool that ceo.ca is literally the conference in your pocket i mean i got so much good value actually some of this stuff from joe mazumdar i mean really like valuable stuff and and i could follow it live or I can check back at it later. You, you guys can, you know, come on here and, and check it out for yourselves. But it's 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 amazing because there's people like Newton and um, Manolo and uh, CGM who who live blog these things, and I expect this to continue. So even if you didn't contribute at CEO.ca, this is one of the most valuable reasons to just be a lurker and just be on the the lookout for this type of stuff. So I, I wanted to mention that. And um, Eric Coffin, he's one of the people or main people that runs the Metals Investors Forum. I wanted to give a shout out to him, not that he really needs it. And, and the reason why is that he is the most watched person. And, you know, with good reason, Eric's got awesome information. I, and I didn't even mention him in terms of the gold, but I think, I think he tends to be really on target with macroeconomics and, you know, not just knowing gold, but going, knowing where mining is going. But I wanted to point out, look, he is the most followed person. And I follow most of the people here. Now, now granted, I, I'm on here... I'm not, I'm not saying you need to follow me or anything like, but, but, but there's, there's a mixture of people who just happen to be on CEO.ca early, like myself. Like that's, that's one of the reasons I probably have, you know, a good amount of followers. But then there's people like Eric Coffin, who's, you know, a very, you know, professional newsletter writer. There you go. Hard rock analyst. And I just want to just show you if you're new, it's very, very simple. You sign up for CEO.ca, you hit subscribe. I actually unsubscribe to him to show you how this works and add to watch list. Boom. Now I tend to not like emails, but you will get emails if you leave this, but you could also just put off. And then every time um, at HRA Coffin posts or someone like Newton posts at HRA Coffin, you'll get the little notification on the right side. I get this for so many things. And, and you know, it's, it, it, it can be kind of chaotic, but it's so great. I mean, I, I, I'm subscribed to so many things, you know, whether it's people or companies. And I just think, it is one of the coolest features at co.ca. So if you didn't know anything else, actually following a lot of these guys is, is super valuable in itself. I mean, they're really, not, not everyone at co.ca uses this, but if you're only gonna follow one person, you probably can't, uh, <laughs> you wouldn't be t- too, too bad off just following Eric Coffin here. And um, you know, to finish it off, a little promo for myself, MBG Trends. So again, going back to the room, if you wanna talk anything Orca Gold or anything learning about co.ca, uh, please do, you know, subscribe to, uh, to MBG trends and, you know, there not that many people check it out, uh, still, but we've got a nice little group of people, you know, some, some guys I, I talked to a little bit privately as well, but some guys I, I just met in the last week or two, you know, guys and gals. And, and so I just wanted to be clear that this is, this is, 
you know, a fun kind of alternative space at CEO.ca, a little different from company rooms where, you know, it's just focused on a company or, um, you know, on a country room. And, and so, you know, anything goes as long as you're, you want to learn about mining stocks or you want to talk about, you know, uh, you want to talk about any specific companies, but you want to have a little bit of a deeper conversation and you got any questions, come to MBG Trends. I will definitely, you know, answer your questions and I've, I've got my little link up, uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully a few more of you show up and, and we've had some, some good conversations. By the way, f fundamental anal analysis, I'll just give him a quick shout out because he's, he's been a great contributor as well. So I think we're pretty good here. I, we're going to wrap up. Um, I thank you for watching, especially if you're still listening to the uh, second in the Orca Gold series. I will probably have more coming soon and hopefully teach you some more stuff about how CEO.ca works as well. Uh, this is Nick, the Mindbook Guy. Thanks again for listening. Bye now.